Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Katie, and today we are announcing the April Showers Bring Readathon. So that's not the name of the readathon, but I just thought it was a cute title for this video because we are announcing the April Christian Fiction Readathon. I am so excited. I am so excited because this readathon is the theme is flowers. And I just, the Lord gave me this fantastic idea and I just ran with it. I was like, this is going to be so much fun. So it is flower themed since it is spring. Right now it snowed yesterday <laughs> as a, um, be the day before I filmed this, although now it's melted. So it's a warmer day today, thankfully. But anyways, I had so much fun coming up with these prompts and I had lovely, lovely help from some of my awesome author friends. So I asked 10 author friends, so there's gonna be 10 prompts. I asked them what their favorite flower was. And I ran off of that by looking up the definition of those flowers and coming up with prompts from those flower definitions. So that's how we're gonna get our 10 prompts for this year's Christian Fiction Readathon. Now, I did actually change the name. I figured, why not? The Christian Fiction, whatever I called it before, it was like really long. I'm like, let's just do like a spring themed name and it's still a Christian Fiction Readathon. Although if you can find a Christian Fiction book to fit a prompt, I'll give you leeway. It's okay, but try to. Okay, so the Readathon, the new name, it's going to be called, and I did look it up to make sure there wasn't another one called this. It is going to be Shower Me With Flowers. So that is the readathon. So use the hashtag Shower Me With Flowers 2024. We'll put the year in there anyways. But yeah, so it's going to be Shower Me With Flowers. I thought that was just such a sweet sounding readathon name. You can call it Shower Me With Flowers Readathon. Either way, it's fine. I'm wearing my floral dress because obviously... Why not? Why not wear something floral and fun? And I've never worn this dress, I think, on camera. I might have if I wore a sweater over it, but never like as a short sleeve. So we're here with all the spring theme. So I have all the prompts. I'll put the graphic here. I will also put the graphic down below in the description box. You can print it or use it if you want to tag it to Instagram. Tag me at paperbacks and ponytails when you finish books. So that way I can see your wonderful books that you pick for this readathon. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. And I think the authors had fun helping me with this too. So thank you to all the authors for helping me. So this year I had 10 authors. I picked 10 completely different authors from last year because authors helped me in a different way last year. So who helped me out? Susie Finkbeiner, Amanda Barrett, Kimberly Woodhouse, Angela Ruth Strong, Jocelyn Green, Becca Kinzer, Jill Eileen Smith, Denair Trump, Tracy Peterson and Jamie Jo Wright. So thank you to all you lovely ladies for helping me out with these prompts. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first prompt is from Susie Finkbeiner. Her favorite flower was magnolias. So the meaning for magnolias is nobility or love of nature. So I went with the first definition. It must have been a bird flying by or something. Anyways, so I went with the first definition, which was nobility. So a book with a character who is royalty. That should be an easy prompt. I will also have a video of recommendations. I think it's coming out next week, so stay tuned for that. Okay, then we have Amanda Barrett, whose favorite flowers are white roses. Now, I chose white roses because we have uh, two other people whose favorite are roses. So I said, do you have a favorite color? Because there are different, different meanings. So Amanda Barrett's was white roses. And me the meaning was eternal love, trust, and innocence. So for this one, I went along the lines of that eternal love and trust. So I want you to find a book with a married couple as the main character. So they're already in eternal love. They're already in that way. Then Kimberly Woodhouse's favorite is pink roses with red tips. I think she also liked tulips, I think, but I went with the roses. So for that one, the double delights, which that's what they're called, um, it means unity which I thought was a great idea. So for that one, pick a book with a wedding in it because you, what better unity is two people coming together in marriage. So yeah, that was 
an easy one, a book with a wedding in it. It could be at the end of the book, it could be in the beginning, middle, doesn't matter, just as long as it has a wedding in it. It doesn't even have to be the main couple. If the main couple ends up meeting at a friend's wedding, that's a wedding in the book. I don't count that. Okay, the next one is from Kimberly Woodhouse. Oh, I just said that. It was Kimberly Woodhouse. My brain. Anyways. The next one is from Angela Ruth Strong, and her favorite is my favorite, actually. She loves sunflowers. So I was like, no wonder we have become fast friends. We both love sunflowers. So the meaning of sunflowers. Now, there's two different meanings. The one for the tall ones is adoration, and the dwarf style ones that are like, I think they're like three or four feet, um, they're still tall. The, that one means haughtiness. Now, I went with the haughtiness because we already have quite a few romance <laughs> romance prompts. So we're going with haughtiness. So for that one, and it can go two different ways. It can either have a wealthy character in it, um, hopefully the main character, or um, this also goes along with the wealthy, a Fortune 400 character. Now that uh, Jen Toronto, I think that's all she writes or most of what she writes is set during the Fortune 400 era. And this only means that there was a set list of 400 people back in the early, I think early 1900s, that these were the elite society. And if you were not on this list, you really weren't invited to any parties. You pretty much were ousted or ostracized by society. Even if you had a bunch of new money where you became wealthy overnight and were like a billionaire, if you weren't on that list, you were not part of society. So that's pretty much what the, for what the, for what the Fortune 400 means. So. But if you can't figure that one out or can't find a book based off of that, then go ahead and go for just a wealthy character or somebody in society. Because I felt like haughtiness just felt very, I don't know, like the Fortune 400 or the, um, or the elite in society. So yes, we're going with that. Not everybody is haughty though in society. I'm sure there's nice people. If you are, yay. Okay, and then we have Jocelyn Green. And Jocelyn Green's favorite flower. Um, some of these people had more than one flower, which thank you for that in case other people had the same option. Uh, she likes hydrangea. So the meaning of hydrangea is gratitude for being understood, which I had no idea really what that meant, or frigidity and heartlessness, which I went with that one because that's just fun. I mean, who knew that hydrangea meant heartlessness and frigidity? Like, that just, doesn't that just scream? A villain. So read a book with a villainous character. I mean, it can even just be a mean person because there's definitely those like kind of, you know, those characters that are like the evil stepmother, even though, you know, you know, that's been overdone, but <laughs> there's characters. It could be a mean sister. It could be a mean friend. It could be an arch enemy. It could even be an enemies to lovers, honestly, because one of those, one of those characters is usually either frigid or heartless. So there's your go ahead for that. So yes, just a character who's heartless, a villain, frigid, you know, hard as ice. That's what frigid means, kind of. So yeah, anything along those lines will absolutely work. And I, that's probably one of my favorite prompts in here was I, that was just fun. All right, the next one is Becca Kinzer. And she gave me a flower that I have never heard of before. And this is on Lantana flowers. And she chose them because they're pretty, but also she can keep them alive in her garden. I just love that. So the meaning behind Lantana is liveliness, energy, and positivity. So that, that does speak about Becca. She is lively and energetic. So I felt like that was good, especially her books are kind of like that too, which is really neat. So I, oh, it's also associated, I forgot there's two definitions. It's also associated with joy, radiance, and a zest for life. And I chose that second definition, uh, joy, radiance, and zest for life. So I want to, I want you to read a story where a character goes on an adventure, goes on a trip, has a quest, just something that gives them a zest for life. Um, I know quests don't necessarily mean joy, but you know, you can go with, um, a zest for life because honestly, you know, it takes also energy to go on a adventure or a quest. So anything where a character goes on a trip, an adventure, a vacation, a quest, anything like that just gives a kind of a zest for life feel. Okay, and then Jill Eileen Smith gave me a long list of flowers. <laughs> Apparently she had this right, right at the top of her head. She had like 10 flowers ready for me, but I ended up going with carnations for her. And so carnations means fascination 
for mother's love. Now, which one do you think I went with? Again, probably not fascination because we had too many, too many romance. Although it could be like fascinating, fascinating character. But I went with mother's love. So pick a book that has characters that are a mother and daughter. It can be in both perspectives. It could just be in the mother's or the daughter's perspective. But just a story that has kind of a focal point between a mother and the daughter. So I also have, I have one in my head right now that would work. So can't wait to share that one. But yeah, so that would absolutely work. Okay, and then Denair Trump gave me another rose, uh, Lincoln roses, which are red roses. So um, there was no definition for actually Lincoln roses, just that they were named after the president. So I went with actually what red roses are, which means love or I love you. So read a romance. Super easy. Not going to nitpick about that. If it's got a romance, it, it counts, even if it's a subplot of a romance. Because I know a lot of you might not enjoy romance. I love it. But you may not. If it has like a very, very minor plot of romance, you can count it. I'll count it. And honestly, I was going to say it means love. Love of a family member. I would count that too. So if it's got like a family that love each other, go for that too. It's fine. All right. And then Tracy Peterson likes lilacs or peonies. So I went with peonies which is actually one of my favorite. Oh, that smell. Lilacs too. Oh, two of my favorite smells, lilacs and peonies. They smell gorgeous. What am I wearing? I think I'm wearing roses. <laughs> All right. So the meaning behind peonies is bashful, happy life, or shame. Interesting, right? There's like three different um, meanings behind it. So I went with shame. Kind of shame. Yeah, I went with shame. So a book with a flawed character. So this is where a character has some flaws, has felt shame in her life, but like the Lord has helped her through it. So whether she struggled through addiction, through something that happened with her in, in a violent act, or she witnessed something, you know, just a flawed character, which we are all flawed. Every single one of us is flawed, except for Jesus. And he's the one who helps us through, the, through those flaws and shows us you are not flawed, you are loved. And so I want to shine a light on the flawed characters because they are absolutely loved. So I hope, I hope enjoy that adventure. I will try to find some flawed characters for you as well. All right, and then the last one is from Jamie Jo Wright and she liked violets. So the meaning behind violets is a modesty and humility. So for this one, I chose a hero who doesn't claim to be one, someone who is modest, someone who has humility, someone who just um, doesn't embody a hero, you know, like he doesn't scream, hey, I'm a hero, listen to me. No, he's more like just an act that just happens to be a hero and he happens to be on the scene at the right time or he could be in the armed forces or he could be um, a fireman, someone who like is a hero in real life but doesn't like profess to be one. So yeah, pretty much any hero would count unless he's like bragging about it, then I would say skip that book. <laughs> And read another one for that prompt. So those are the 10 prompts for the readathon. I hope you join in. I think it's going to be tons and tons of fun. I love this. Uh, I will also, before I forget, I'll put it right here just so I don't remember either. There will be a poll happening literally the exact same day this is coming out. There will be a poll of four choices. I might do two. I don't know yet. Two or four choices for the buddy read because I like to do buddy reads during readathons. It's fun. I enjoy doing that. So I'm going to pick four and we're going to pick one there. And the, most likely there'll be ones that I have to prioritize only because I don't want to add anything to my TBR. <laughs> so I will make sure to have a like mixture of genres and stuff for you to choose from. But it's going to be fun. I can't wait to read the buddy read with you. I can't wait to do these prompts. I need to get my thinking cap on because I have no idea what I'm going to read for these prompts at all. No, I have no idea. But I better think about it within the next two weeks. So anyways, I think it's gonna be fun. I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, that's it. So let me know if you're excited down in the comments. I am. I hope you are. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video.